So I have been living with an ICD for about four years now. Um, I yeah have some actually lift experience now after four years with this device in me. You know, it's placed here at the top left in my chest. The reason why they placed it in me is because I had a cardiac arrest in my sleep four years ago. So that's why. Uh, now this video is not per se gonna be about my cardiac arrest. It's more, I, I, I wanted to focus more specifically on the ICD and you know how life has been after four years maybe you know your cardiologist is talking about placing an icd in you or maybe you just got an icd and yeah there's so many questions around you know having a device like this in you right i mean i've climbed with it i've dived with it i've snowboarded with it i drive in a car in a scooter i've traveled with people i've traveled alone i've yeah I've been many places with the device and done many activities and things with it uh, that I uh, hope to cover uh, in this video too. Again, hopefully help you put your thoughts at ease. Maybe already a good thing to know, life isn't over, right? When you get the ICD. Of course, I don't know your situation, right? Some of the things that I will share, you will have to readjust it to you but maybe it can already be a starting block to build on. Uh, there are other people that I had on the podcast, on the YouTube channel uh, that I also talked to, also borrow parts of their story on how they dealt with living with an ICD and write out your manual of what works for you. Check the description also because I'm actually gonna cover quite some resources. I will put them all there. So let's uh, dive into the video and uh, let me share with you how life has been after four years of having an ICD uh, as a young person. Having an ICD is likely going to be harder uh, on someone when you're young. And with that, I'm not saying by any means that if you uh, or older, that it's not going to be hard, right? Uh, I to that's it, it, It's still very specific, individual on each person differently on how they will cope with having an ICD. But in general, it's harder for young people. Why? Well, because, I mean, I'm 31. I had my ICD, like I said, about four years. So I think I was like 27, 28 then uh, that I pl placed it in me. You're expected to still function like a normal person in society. That can put some uh, quite some pressure actually on a person, on a young person, that you have to be as everyone else your age and you want to be, of course. In reality, it's not so easy. And that by itself, the feeling of feeling pressured that you have to function like a young person still, even though quite some drastic things have changed, that on itself, can, can, it, it can be very hard actually on a young person. Also just, well, beauty and, and still wanting to look good. Uh, that's also more relevant. Is maybe not the exact right word, but more on a young person's mind than when you are 70 or 80. When you're young, you're still dating. You're, you, you still, you know, want to find someone maybe. And um, that can bring quite some insecurities. There are some studies on this that, especially for, for young women, actually. I did an episode with Dr. Sears, who is a clinical health psychologist on the podcast. You can also find it on the YouTube channel about the psychological care for people with an ICD or who survived a cardiac arrest. Uh, I will link because we did two episodes now with him. Uh, they're about an hour long. It's a Q&A episode where people sending questions that I asked Dr. Sears around the psychological care again. I will link those two episodes in the description. That episode, I can highly recommend you if you have some insecurities, uh, whether you have already an ICD or not about, well, how will I look now and stuff like that. Uh, if you have insecurities around that and worries, then that episode, we cover quite beautifully that topic as well. Support is by far one of the biggest ones that have, has been really helpful uh, for me that I think is also gonna be very helpful for many people um, who have an ICD or who are about to get an ICD. I would say that there are a couple of areas that you 
should have in your support system one friends right friends some people that you can talk to about this uh, because first of all the more you can talk about having an icd the more it becomes normal and the more normalized it is in your life the less of a big thing it's going to be talking about things normalizes them so the same here with an icd talk with friends about it friends that you can also call you know when you are having a hard time friends that you trust or family members you know friends and family members that includes also right a spouse boyfriend girlfriend partner and then secondly having professional help um so which includes a cardiologist someone that you can ask questions to about your icd but then also a mental health professional a mental health professional a psychologist and i'm not saying i'm not forcing you right that you should have this not everyone actually needs it it might be good to just have a contact a person that you could make an appointment with in case when there is a bigger fire happening in your life and with fire i mean when there are more worries appearing in your life around your icd or your heart disease or well whichever reason of why you have your icd having a psychologist uh, a clinical health psychologist health psychologist is good to underscore so that's someone who is trained on dealing with health issues right like uh cardiac health issues they will be more trained and understanding towards an icd and more knowing on what it is and yeah dr sears for example someone that i had on the podcast is a clinical health psychologist so yeah the episodes are in the description to check that's also a second component to have in this support system and then thirdly i would say uh, which is also i think a very important last pillar in your support system is to actually talk to survivors or, you know, I mean, with survivors, I'm talking now about cardiac arrest survivors, but, or people, you know, who have an ICD, people with an ICD to actually meet those in person or online. I actually do with the Heart Warrior Project online meetups, which are free, right? So they're completely free every month. Uh, we do two. Yeah. Also in the description, I will put a link. Now I will say they're actually meant for cardiac arrest survivors who most of the time to always also have an icd or someone who is at risk of a cardiac arrest they're also welcome if you kind of fall in that category then you you're super welcome to join one of our online meetups uh, but there are other ways of finding online support uh, there are many support pages or support groups on facebook on reddit uh, there's quite some forums, so I will also link a uh, few uh, like that in the description. Now, one thing that I will say, though, and this is a, a word of caution. Uh, when you join a support group on Facebook, for example, you will read many, many stories of someone who might have had a shock or might have had some almost very traumatic experience because of their ICD. Okay, how should I put this? I, I, I don't want to, in a way, discredit that person uh, and their experience, but take them with a grain of salt. And why I'm saying that is because often when we something bad has happened, then we feel the need to share it. If, I mean, if you want to leave a re review on Google Maps, most of the time you feel the urge to really do that when you had a bad experience. And the same is often on this. When we had a bad experience with our, our, our ICD, uh, we want to share it, you know, for support, which is perfectly fine, right? And that's not a bad thing at all. But then there might be people reading, like you maybe, who are about to get an ICD or you just got one and it will completely polarize the actual reality of the of an ICD because you're all just reading bad things about it and that's actually not the truth. I will also say to that you never know completely the full story of the person and why they might have for example a shock. Maybe they slept barely anything that night, drank drank tons of coffee and some energy drinks 
and maybe their ICD because of that misread something and gave them a shock. I'm just saying something, right? But you never completely know the whole full story. So again, take these posts with a grain of salt. If you're quite an anxious person and you know that you have quite an anxious personality, I would almost say don't join those Facebook groups because they can actually be quite triggering and make you feel more anxious because they give all these stories and you can spiral down in a whole lot more of thoughts and worries that are actually probably not relevant to you at all. They can be really amazing. There's some really, really kind, supportive and beautiful people on those support groups. You can feel some true support from them. That's definitely there, right? But then the other side is also true and I just want to be as honest as I can in this video. Uh, so be also caution, cautious of that. Time alone isn't enough uh, to feel really that trust in yourself, in your body and in your ICD. You also have to expose yourself to situations that you feel or that you haven't, you know, done again since your ICD implant. Uh, or situations that you feel insecure about. Doing those, exposing yourself to those, and then living through them, that builds trust. So this this is actually exposure therapy, right? That you're applying to yourself. So uh, how would this look, for example? I, know, I, I remember like going for a walk for the first time again after my cardiac arrest and then with the ICD. That was by itself... Well, scary. Now, I'm personally not a very anxious person, actually. But, but you know, that was something I, yeah, had to feel some trust that I could do that. So, first, do that with someone. And do it maybe just for a couple of minutes. Then, do that longer, right? Um, a day later or whenever. With a person again, right? So you slowly expose yourself to a more challenging version of the previous one. And at some point when you feel confident, even if you don't per se, it can also be good to take the leap and, and you know, and try. Go for a walk alone. This is, of course, for some people where it can also be very helpful to have a psychologist to guide you. Yeah, after that, uh, for me, was going on a trip with someone. First in Belgium, uh, so in my home country, then abroad, which was a big move in many ways. Like, holy shit, the first time going abroad. Now, after four years, I've done many trips with people abroad in Belgium, many trips by myself. Uh, or, you know, with climbing, with sports. I, you know, in my case, I love climbing. The first time was climbing indoors with people. I mean, most of the time you climb with someone. But uh, yeah, climbing indoors and then, you know, trying to go climb outdoors. It's also slowly exposing from one situation that's easier and then building it up to a more challenging one. And now too, I feel more comfortable and more at ease whenever I go climb outside because I feel that I have trust in my body and in myself. Let time do its thing. That's definitely a component in this as well. But then you also have an active part in this by exposing yourself to situations uh, that you haven't done since your ICD implant and building slowly on that as well. Look for solutions to continue doing what you like doing or what you love doing in life. In the hospital, you mainly just get set what you can't do anymore. And that is it. Well, I was told not to climb anymore, which I was like, but, you know, I like, I really like doing this. Uh, and can't I at least look for a way to make it work? So I did. So what I mean with look for solutions and also in my case with climbing, for example, is that I don't climb every kind of route anymore. And I might share some climbing terminologies now but you know you have so, you have a wall that's called a slab where the wall is like this so you're climbing here i don't climb routes like that anymore because these are routes where you can slip off and then maybe fall with your chest 
on the wall. I don't climb that anymore. I mainly only climb walls that are like this, which are overhang. So you're climbing, right? Climber here. And then you fall, but you just fall, you fall to the back. So nothing can ever hit your ICD. Uh, I also use a device called a Grigri, which is a, a device that you use to belay people. So when I'm belaying someone and I would, for example, get a shock and pass out, the device is made like an, it has an auto block function in it. So what happens? Nothing. I just hang there. The person <laughs> on top just hangs there. And most to always there's, well, people around you that you could just ask for help or likely I will wake up again. Now, a other, you know, way of, if you like sports and they told you no, that could maybe open that possibility again for you to do it. So there's a company called Vital Beats and they make t-shirts uh, that has a shield, a protection shield, right? This is, I mean, you have to put that here in the pocket. Uh, if you're listening to the episode, then you're not seeing it, but I'm holding here a t-shirt and then there is this, um, shield made from D30, I think it's called the material. It observes shocks. It's absolutely insanely protective. And they, by the way, make custom ones, right? So if your ICD is on your side or on your right side, uh, they can actually customize it for different needs. But this, I mean, again, from the company Vital Beats, I will also put it in the description. This opened the possibility again for me to go snowboard without any worries. I mean, I did it for the first time this year, which was uh, so, so much fun to finally do it again. <laughs> I would have been a lot more terrified actually if I did not had this t-shirt with that protection shield in it. But I felt so good, so safe the whole time because I knew if I would fall, this would protect my ICD and no damage could come to it. Also this year, um, a friend of mine uh, went paintballing. He invited me and at first I was like, oh damn, but my ICD. And then I recalled like, oh wait, I have this t-shirt with that shield. And also I felt just because I went it was, I never done it before, paintballing, it was so much fun. But I felt just safe, didn't have to worry about my ICD, which I would have <laughs> all the whole time if I did not have this. So that's also something that a lot of cardiologists don't know exists as a solution. And that can open up for many people their sport again that, that the cardiologist said no to. Diving, I'm also said no on, which I, I mean... Yeah, I love diving. Uh, did it for many, many, many years before my cardiac arrest. I am also still hopeful here, even though that, you know, it was a clear no. I'm still looking out for solutions. There are dive masks, for example, right? We, we, where with the dive, well, with diving, you have your mask and then you have your regulator where you're getting the oxygen from. But now there are actually dive masks where the regulator is already one thing. So, if you would pass out, the wreck would not fall out of your mouth, but it's there, it's still attached, so you can still breathe. That's a beautiful solution, actually. So look for solutions. Don't just simply take no as a definite no forever. Put some good restrictions and rules on what you can do, like the example that I gave with climbing, to make it safe as possible or find so solutions like vital beats like this product to still do the sports or whatever activity that you enjoy doing sometimes with the climbing or diving when i tell people that i can see some becoming uncomfortable you can never be a hundred percent in life safe you you know right you, whether you have an icd or not if i would always have to be in the most optimal best place to receive a shock i basically i just can't leave the house anymore i would be living in the hospital just all the time like that would be a great situation then yeah to live in in case if i ever would get a shock but that's not a life so for me, it's also weighing off the pros and cons of like, I'm still here. I survived the cardiac arrest. I'm, I'm trying to just enjoy life, 
that doesn't mean that I have to take risk, risks, you know, just to take risks. That I don't like that at all. But I try to still do things that I really like. And I try to make them as safe as possible. But they will never be 100% bullet point, uh, bullet safe. If you really want that, then like I said, you just have to live in the hospital. And that's it then. Then you are in that sense safe. But probably also quite unhappy. Don't be a patient. Be a hard warrior. Words have a lot of power, whether we realize it or not. And I mean, I've called this project the Heart Warrior Project, not the Heart Patient Project, <laughs> because the word warrior is a word that, well, it's a word like every word, a word with meaning behind it. And that word is a more powerful word, an uplifting word. The word patient can often be seen as a, a, yeah, well, a word that kind of pushes you down. There's now something wrong with you. You're a patient. And I mean, of course, I'm a hard patient, right? But that's never really the word that I use to describe myself, or when I talk about myself, I don't talk using that word. I am a hard warrior. I am someone who has battled through this for years and who will continue fighting. I don't give up. I will continue fighting. Whenever, and I've had <laughs> quite some surgeries in my life on my heart, somewhere I also had to be fully uh, awake. When I'm lying there, I'm lying in a well, I'm, I feel like I'm in a battleground. I'm fighting. I'm there to survive. I'm a warrior, not a patient who's just there passively lying, giving myself completely over. I want to offer you that possibility to change that word of not calling yourself a heart patient or a patient, but instead calling yourself a heart warrior. As simple as it all might sound, it actually, you know, creating the Heart Warrior project and really using that word instead of patient on myself as well, the word warrior, has actually been a tremendous help as well on how I look at myself. Again, words carry power and choose your words carefully <laughs> because they will also make you feel certain things. So be a heart warrior. Not a hard patient. I had, um, I think two years ago, my first shock. Didn't have any more after that. Uh, it also happens in my sleep, like my cardiac arrest. So, yeah. Now, I will say when I had my shock and I woke up, um, I actually thought I had a nightmare. Because I woke up in complete panic, felt my heart like racing um, with, you know, some heavy breathing. But I wasn't 100% sure, actually, that I received the shock. Yet, at the same time, I knew that I probably had a shock. And the reason why I was more sure that I had a shock was because I actually felt through the leads some electricity going. Yeah, I looked it up on the internet at that night because it was like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. After five minutes, I was like, yeah, probably I've, I've had a shock, all right. And then I went back to sleep. <laughs> it wasn't a very traumatic event or anything. Probably, I also would say, because I was in maybe the best possible situation to receive a shock. You hear many stories on, you know, the experience of having a shock. And, like, the stories that you sometimes hear are, like, very extreme sometimes. That it was the worst pain that they ever felt in their life. To the other opposites of people saying, like, eh, it was okay. Uh, I felt something, but I went on. You know, I continue working or I continue doing whatever. How it all might feel on that moment is also depending on so many factors. How you emotionally feel that day, how much you slept, where you are. You know, there's so many components that actually influence how pain is received for us. Here also, I would say, take those stories that you might be reading about someone having a shock also with a grain of salt, not again 
to say that their experience wasn't real, probably your experience will be different of how it might feel if you would ever receive a shock even. Uh, having a shock is one thing, but what this can often do is then create this fear in people of, okay, when will the next shock now happen? Especially if it was actually for that person quite a heavy experience. Basically, you gotta start from the first two things that I shared. The first points of support and building trust. You don't have to start from zero again, but I feel like you have to fall back to those two things. Support, so talk with friends, family members, your spouse about that experience, professionals, cardiologists, psychologists, uh, support groups, support you know, from other people who also have an ICD, talk with them about that experience, normalize the experience once again, and then also rebuild trust up again. I would also say likely, I mean, this was in my case, modifications has happened in a way that um, we did an ablation because of my uh, heart disease, which sadly enough didn't work, but okay, we changed some medications. So you also should recalibrate and adjust the plan that you currently have to see uh, how we could reduce the chances of receiving a shock uh, again, right? So in that sense, also trust the new plan that you have if there has been changes and then fall back to support and build up trust again. And don't be a patient, but be a warrior go forward uh it's not easy but small steps are steps and they matter greatly many people i would also say actually are afraid of the shock of getting a shock but actually that's not a bad thing if you get a shock you actually want to get a shock because then it means that the device saved you and yeah it might be to a degree you know painful maybe for some very painful. What I can say is that it's instant, like it just hits you and that's it. It's not like a lasting pain. Maybe if you have a few more shocks, all right. Um, but it's very, very quick. Don't fear the shock, but be grateful that the, 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 you know, the device did its thing and saved your life. If it didn't, I would have been that night death because I was sleeping alone actually that night. Also be aware of which God that you believe in. And I'm actually not talking about any of the gods that we uh, you know, know of. So if you are quite an anxious person uh, and you know, I, I know a few and they're always talking about the what if situations, what if it will happen here, what if this, what if that, what, you know, always anxiety, every, everything is anxiety. So in that sense, they're, it's, it's their God in a way, anxiety is their God, they're embracing it as the truth and as the one and only truth without actually, I think, sometimes realizing that they're embracing and believing it as a faith, as a God. So here also, words have power. Choose your God deliberately. I'm choosing, for example, the God of meaning. I try to have that more on my mind and feel that more. This project, for example, has been created out of meaning or it gives me meaning and out of love. And I try to be very conscious of the thoughts that I'm letting in and embracing. It's just more of a thought that I am offering you to also maybe ponder on to see what is often in your head because it is like a God in a way, something that we're constantly thinking about. We're navigating life through that belief. Are you aware which one that is? Take some time to think about it and choose deliberately on which God you will follow. So let me wrap up this video with just some last words. Don't compare yourself. Don't compare yourself to someone else's journey, to me, to any other person who has an ICD. 
Uh, comparing is never useful really in life, especially not if it leads you to being less kind on yourself of saying like, oh, I should already be there. Our pet looks different on how we deal with it. Uh, like I said somewhere in the beginning in the video, take bits and parts that are useful for you and leave the rest. Have some kindness for yourself. That is a very underrated word to feel when having an ICD or uh, when you're about to get an ICD. Have some kindness for yourself. And if no one told you today, let me tell you that I am proud of you. And that, yeah, you can be kind on yourself. I, I know that you're doing the best that you can in a not so great and pleasant situation that, well, many of us didn't choose to be in. I mean, honestly, if I did not have to have an ICD and have a heart disease, I would instantly want to wish it away. But it is what it is. And so embrace it. Again, not easy, not fun, but embrace it. And again, you are not alone. Listen to other episodes here on the podcast, on the YouTube channel. Draw inspiration, draw advice out of them. Things that you can use. And also, I'm always here for a chat. You can, you know, if you follow us on Instagram, DM me. I will reach out uh, or leave a comment with anything that you want to get off your chest or any advice or tips that you have for other people. Who have an ICD there such comments are super super welcome also like I said in the video or throughout the video check the description for anything of resources that I mentioned they are all gonna be linked up there and uh, subscribe of course to the channel um, or to the podcast if you like this video or uh, episode if you're listening to it I'm gonna say goodbye now and uh, maybe yeah we will see each other on another video or episode Ciao.